Hello everyone. I felt inspired to share a little bit about two very important concepts in meditation that is not always uh, spoken about. And that is the aspect of energy and stillness. To have a really effective practice, we need to have both of these aspects in our practice. Most meditations these days, they speak mostly of stillness. When people think of meditation, uh, what meditation is, uh, automatically most people think of um, quieting the mind, sitting in peace, sitting in stillness, uh, stopping the mind, being in silence, etc., etc. Uh, this is usually what's talked about when we talk about meditation, and this is usually what people think about. And that is a very important piece, that's a very important aspect of meditation. To be able to quiet the mind, quiet the emotions, uh, sit in stillness, sit in peace, all of these things are very freeing. Uh, because when we ultimately can distance ourselves from the mind and view the mind as an observer, um, we realize how much we've been caught in the mind, how much we've been caught in our emotions, and what chaos and havoc and suffering that cause in our life. So when we discover a way to, to silence the mind, to take distance from the mind, to become the observer, to become the witness, that is very, very freeing. We finally get some peace. Uh, we can finally get some distance and we can finally view the chaos from an observer point of view. And uh, that can be extremely liberating. And there is also great joy there. When we truly go into stillness, uh, there is a great joy, a great natural sense of uh, joy, uh, of peace, of fulfillment, of contentment. Uh, that is at the very base of our being. And the deeper we go into the stillness, the deeper we come in contact with that aspect of ourself. Uh, which is not bothered what happens in the mind. Which is not bothered if we have a good or bad thought or if... Uh, this or that emotion come up. So we get this kind of stability. We, we become like a mountain. And um, yeah, we, we can just take distance from, from all the craziness that we feel like is going on inside ourselves. However, uh, that's only half the story. This aspect we could call Shiva, as they have done in the East. Uh, this is the consciousness aspect, the vast space, the vast awareness that's always present, always in the background, always aware, always awake. And going deeply into stillness brings us in contact with this fundamental nature of our being. Again, very, very important. But there is another aspect that is uh, mostly forgotten when we think about meditation. And that is the energy aspect. That is the feminine aspect. That is Shakti. So out of this stillness, out of this vast space of voidness, of awareness, of consciousness, of whatever you want to call it, arise a creative power which gives rise to this whole existence, to everything around us, to our everything inside of us. Um, although inside and outside ultimately is an illusion. But what we feel in our body, what we feel in our mind, what we see around us, all this is the aspect of Shakti, the creative force of consciousness. And that creative force of consciousness, that creative uh, energy of consciousness, is not separate from consciousness itself. Without it, consciousness would not be this manifest world. It will be just void. 
just empty, void stillness. But stillness dances. Stillness comes to life. Stillness creates. Um, the sound in silence, the light reflecting is everything in life. And that creative force is Shakti. And Shakti it gives rise to bliss. Yes, yeah, Shakti uh, in our body is known as Kundalini. And it is the creative sexual energy in our body. And when we start working with this force, uh, we get access to a bliss that was not there when we were just dwelling in emptiness, when we were just dwelling in stillness. Yeah, you can sit a long time in stillness as a meditator and it's still lacking juice. Yeah, it's still lacking uh, that aliveness, that life, that bliss that, that uh, people speak about in in that yogis speak about in meditation, that texts speak about. Yeah, we have chat, sat, chit, ananda. Yeah, truth, consciousness, and bliss. Let's not forget about that vital quality of bliss. And this is the beauty of energy work. Uh, this is the beauty of working with energy in your meditation and uh, cultivating your internal energy. When you do that, you let the sexual energy rise in your being and you get access to this first subtle bliss. First, this just subtle aliveness. But then it starts to grow as you practice through the month, through the years, as your practice start to grow. It becomes more and more alive. And the sexual energy that used to be um, just focused in our gonads, in our uh, second chakra, in our lower chakras, starts to rise and it starts to enliven our bodies and it starts to enliven these various centers along the central channel and the three dantians in our body. Um, and as it does so, we get access to higher levels of consciousness as well. Um, if we only focus on stillness, it can become a very disembodied experience. And although beautiful, although it can be very deep, personally, I believe that we need to bring our bodies alive because our body is the vessel we use here in this world. We are in the world. We are not disembodied spirits. So our task is to bring consciousness to bring spirit into the physical yeah and by bringing consciousness into the physical by working with energy um, we can work through all these areas of our body that might be filled with traumas that might be filled with old memories which are causing us suffering uh, deep rooted and unconscious behavior which are causing us suffering and not being able to fully be here to fully be in the moment and be present within our vessel at this time so when we work with energy we have no choice but to face these things because energy as it starts to rise it uh, it starts to work through all these blockages. Usually when we work with this energy, we work with it bottom to top first. Kundalini can also come top to bottom. Um, but first we usually work it from the bottom to top. Now some people that are very devotional, that might work on the other way too, which is also a very beautiful path. Uh, but the way I teach it is first bringing it up from the bottom and then going from the top down. Yeah? So when this energy starts to rise, it's a very strong energy, sexual energy, 
the creative force of life is the strongest energy we have to work with. Um, it's the energy we were born from. It's the energy of life. Uh, whether you have good sexual um, experiences in your life or traumatic, it is still the life energy. It is still the very juice of life. It is still the energy you were born from. So when you work it this way, it can start hitting blockages. It can start hitting old stored trauma. And this might be minor trauma. It might be major trauma. And even as a child, when we experience something which seems to be very small, it can cause a big trauma in our system. Um, because as children, the first few years, we are completely programmable. So a lot of our programs that are running are from early, early childhood days. So we store these in our body. We store these traumas in our body. And when we work with this energy, it starts to hit these things. And it can be uncomfortable, but ultimately it will liberate these things and open up these areas in our body and make us more free. And as these spaces are more free, it gives the possibility of consciousness, of spirit, to, of our soul to inhabit these areas of our body, which before were occupied with trauma. So we can more manifest spirit here on earth, here in this life. And we can be more present, more awake to all situations that come to us. Also, as sexual energy starts to rise first it fills uh, the lower areas let's say the lower dantian here we get access to this kind of vitality this new sense of vitality which feels really good um, it just feels like we're full of life we're alive um, yeah we just have more juice we feel mm, we feel really good vital and um, you can see that spark in the eye of a person that has that vitality awakened. And then we start coming up to the second Dantian and working with the emotions, uh, bringing up love in our heart. Then as it rises in um, to the upper levels of the upper Dantian and the, the chakras in the head, there are many various chakras in the head. Uh, we get access to consciousness, to spirit, to this vast stillness. But it is different than from just sitting and getting into stillness without working with the energy. Because now you have all this vitality backing it up. And you have all this blissful energy running through your body and merging with that stillness in the head. And it can become very, very deep. And it can become a mix of energy and stillness of Shiva and Shakti, of uh, bliss and emptiness. Yeah? And in my experience, this is a lot faster. Working with energy is a lot faster. If you do it the right way, um, to get access also to stillness. Because again, trying to quiet the mind can be a very hard task for many of you who have tried meditation. No, it's very difficult to, to just try to quiet the mind. And when we work with energy, uh, this happens automatically at some stage. Because when bliss, why is bliss so important? Well, first of all, it feels good. And the other thing is that once bliss start to fill these centers, the mind has no trouble being quiet, yeah? If you experience a strong orgasm, for example, you have no problem being focused in the moment. You're there. You're right there in the enjoyment. Or if you're experiencing uh, some other kind of high where you feel really full of life, you have no problem being very present because you feel great. And when we feel great, this moment is great. And it's the same when this bliss starts to come up in our being. 
it quiets the mind automatically. It takes care of that. As, as the prana reaches the higher levels of the brain, stillness is an uh, automatic unfoldment. We don't have to work at it. Yeah? So this is the first merging point where we can get access to deep levels of absorption, also known as samadhi. It usually happens first in the upper parts of the brain, in the center of the brain. This is where it's easiest to access uh, deep levels of absorption. After that, we bring that mixture of stillness and, and energy down through our body and into our heart. And this is the descent of the Kundalini, where uh, the descent of the Dove, where it goes down. The nectar starts flowing down into the sacred heart. And uh, bliss and energy merge as love in the heart. And it's a very deep and beautiful experience. So this is what, what I have found personally, uh, having first worked with stillness practices on their own, and then coming into energy work, and, and seeing how that shifted my whole practice. And uh, now after I've been practicing for about uh, 22, 23 years or so, something like that. And um, I highly recommend to work to do energy work because it is faster and it includes all the levels of your being yeah all the way from the bottom from the most gross from the physical um, to the energetic to the emotional to the uh, through the mind and beyond into consciousness it includes all these levels it's a bottom up approach and then top to bottom rather than bypassing all these levels and going into stillness and and still having unresolved issues in the body yeah because that can happen when you go to stillness only now that being said if you go deep enough into stillness energy at some point will start to unfold kundalini at some point will start to unfold there is no uh, you cannot go the spiritual path and reach a level of awakening without working with kundalini it's not possible because kundalini is the evolutionary force so if you go deep enough into stillness eventually energy will arise just as if you go deep enough into energy work eventually stillness will come but I have found through my personal experience that it's faster to work with energy because you're immediately starting to work with that ev evolutionary force. And when that evolutionary force really comes up in your body, in your being, its purpose is to evolve you. Its purpose, once it's not stuck in the lower uh, energy centers and just working on uh, procreation and just working on the lower levels of uh, enjoyment um, where the energy starts to seep out all the time rather than going inward and upward uh, once you uh, work with them on that level and kind of stop that outflow and start bringing it up instead it starts to evolve you in different levels. You're no longer stuck in this lower level of enjoyment. And the bliss uh, can take you further. Yeah? So that's why Kundalini is said to be a lightning path. A very fast path. And it's also said for to be for the warrior. For those who are brave of heart. Because it can bring up a lot of stuff. As this energy arises. As this energy unfolds as i said it starts to hit all these blockages it starts to hit all these areas where we're tight where we're cramped up all these areas where we have trauma and we have to work through them we can't avoid them so it can be unpleasant at times we have to face our shit 
we have to face our emotions we have to face all this stuff and it's important to not project it out but to really sit with it and be with it and face it so that why it's a warrior path and it's a faster path because you're working through all this stuff and then you uh, again create more space in your body create more space in your being for consciousness for your soul to come in and inhabit those spaces so i hope that helps i hope that's uh, useful and um, if you're interested to learn more about energy work i teach a course in internal energy work um, which mixes very powerful methods to to work on both these levels on the stillness aspect and on the energy aspect and to mix them together as one because shiva and shakti ultimately are always in union they are seen either in sexual union or as a half aspect of one aspect being male half aspect being female shiva and shakti in union or all these tantric art where buddhas are in copulated in union these are all expressing artistically this union of energy creative force and consciousness which ultimately is experienced as life itself everything unfolding out of from this stillness as this stillness and as this blissful radiance of life itself so with that i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you very much